What's going on everyone? Daniel Rodriguez here to stand and review another movie. This time it's the latest movie to be produced by J.J. Abrams. It stars John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, and John Gallagher Jr. It's directed by Dan Transberg. And it has an estimated budget of $15 million, guys. This is a blood relative to Cloverfield, man. Not a direct sequel, but it's sort of in the same universe. You know, all that kind of weird shit, man. So it's almost in the same universe. It's blood related. So, this is, this is 10 Cloverfield Lane, guys. Uh, I saw a Thursday, man, early showing, man. A bunch of people showed up. Very awesome turnout. A lot of people enjoyed it, man. And I enjoyed it myself, man. I was very surprised. Honestly, I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite movies of the year so far. And I could see this being on my top 10 movies of the year list for sure. This movie is awesome. It's great, it's really good, it's everything I wanted it to be, and more. A lot of surprises, a lot of twists. Again, this is a non-spoiler review. I'm just going to give you the pros, the good stuff, the cons, the bad stuff. Give you my final score, tell you whether or not you should go check this out in theaters, or maybe wait for rental, or maybe just skip this in general. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here is my non-spoiler review for 10 Cloverfield Lane. By the way, guys, I am making a spoiler review as well, so this is the non-spoiler review. If you want to see me talking about the movies, if you've seen it, you want to hear my opinions on everything about spoilers, that will be a uh, spoiler review will be linked down below. Whenever I upload it, I'll put the link down below. First off, John Goodman is amazing in here. All the actors are doing a fantastic job, but I gotta say the one actor that shines is John Goodman. He's fantastic. He plays a character, ca character named Howard, and he is he's, he's Oscar-worthy performance. I mean, they were terrified of him. He's creepy. He's disturbing. You know something's wrong with him. You just can't put your finger on it, but you know, is this guy lying? Is this guy not lying? What is, is he, is, does he really know? Is he faking it and there's nothing wrong and he's keeping him in a bunker? Is the world actually ending and they're, what's going on? That's the whole movie there, where you're thinking, what the hell's going on? You're almost a detective. But you're you're literally stuck in the bunker with him. You want to see the outside. You want to know what's outside. But you can't. You're in the bunker. But Mary Elizabeth Weinstead was awesome in here. Last movie I saw her was Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I don't know what she's been doing lately, man. But I, I mean, she's beautiful. She's a really good actress, man. She was awesome in here. Uh, I'm very glad that she, you know, was in this role. And she was perfect for it, man. She definitely fits the role. Um... She's not a scaredy little brat, you know, like, oh, you know, I want to get out of here. She literally actually, you know, tried to fight back. She, you know, she did a lot of work in here. And I got to say that that was a very, uh, really awesome thing. To, you want to root for her, basically. She's a really awesome character. Uh, you don't hate her. John Gallagher Jr. as well, he was a very funny character. He was definitely that comedic relief, and it did work very well, man. Um, he played Emmett, and I liked the character a lot, of course, because he's the only guy besides John Goodman. You got the creepy, you got the cute, and you got the funny. Who doesn't like that in a bunker in the apocalypse, man? Really good. There are a few little lines here and there where that didn't work for John Gallagher Jr. because he was like, like example, like, oh, you know what I regret? Tattoos. Oh, man, I would have got tattoos, but, you know, now I can't because, you know, the world and all that. But I would have got 200 tattoos. I would have got one head to toe, man. I would have got YOLO on the forehead. A bunch of kids say that. I don't know what it means, but it must be cool. So I would get it. It's just, like, dialogue like that. There's some dialogue given to him that sort of was like, okay, he's, like, he talks a little bit. Like, for a while, he talks about it, but you just never catch on to really... You know, he, he was talking about regrets and everything, but there are other dialogues like where he talks about his backstory, and it was kind of confusing, like, was your backstory like a week ago, or was it five years ago, or was it when you were in high school, what is your, like, I, he never really, really specified at times with his backstory, so there are a few little elements here and there where it's kind of a little shady, and they didn't write his, like, full on, those are just some of the problems. The cinematography in here is beautiful, and you're in a bunker the whole time, and when they could make you feel like... I don't like feel like you're stuck in the bunker, but the way that they maneuver the camera, the way that they, you know, use it to its advantage was beautifully done, man. Dan Transberg and his team did an awesome job. The music in here as well. This movie is a very music elemented movie where there's orchestra and there, you know, there's a band in the background and everything, and it has that scary sort of music. 
and they use it a lot to its advantage. And in IMAX, it is beautiful. The sound, the music's right in your ears, man. It's right there. It's like, I love the twist. I love the two ways that one movie is in the bunker and another movie is outside. Two movies in one. Except I did like the bunker storyline a little bit better. I'm going to be honest, but... Uh, again, great acting, man, cinematography, all the directing was awesome, man, the music in here, the effects, practical and CGI effects, were all awesome. And one last thing for the pros, I think the one thing that really shines about this movie is not knowing what you're going to see. I, you know, I remember when the trailer came out January 16th, January 15th, around there, and I love the trailer. This is a movie where when I, when I saw it and I, I walked out of the theater, I literally told myself, I want to see this movie again. I want to see it two or three times. And then when I saw the trailer, I saw it Thursday night, and then when I saw it on Friday, I saw, I mean, I saw uh, the trailer. I went on YouTube and I saw it again because I love the song, uh, I Think We're Alone Now. I love, I, I think that was a, a, a masterpiece of a trailer, man. Very beautiful, awesome trailer. Uh, very sneaky. And when I was watching the trailer, I was like, fuck, I want to watch it again. I want to see it right now. Like, I want to own it on Blu-ray. Come on, get it on Blu-ray already, dude. I want to see it now. Uh, I want to see it again. So, but it's a movie, and I've heard other reviewers, I've heard other people, too, say they want to see it again. This is what this movie is. You, like, it somehow gets in your mind and you want to see it again. It's the unknown. And once you know, you just want to see it again and see it again and see it again because it is a very enjoyable movie. It's well acted, man. It's very well acted. Great effects, man. Great music in here, dude. A lot of great orchestra, original score. And, you know, there's some 80s or, not, I mean, 60s, 50s music as well. But, I mean, just a lot of great references in here. I... I can't hate on this movie, man. There's only a few hate things in here, like just some of the dialogue for Emmett, like his backstory. Um, other things like some, like it does go unrealistic at times, but come on. It's Cloverfield. It's not a direct sequel, but it's Cloverfield. You expect some sort of monster in Cloverfield? Yeah, that's unrealistic, okay? But when it goes to unrealistic, it's sort of like, you're very lucky. How did you do that? Like, are you kidding me? Are you a pro at making that? Sort of stuff like that. Like, the character got really lucky at times. Really lucky, man. But, um, man, other than that, I'm going to have to give 10 Cloverfield Lane guys an 8.5 out of a 10. I thought it was a really, really, really good movie. Great movie, man. Uh, just because it's 8.5 doesn't mean it can't be great. It's a great movie. It's my favorite movie of March so far, mind you. It's only been two weeks into March. But it's my favorite movie almost of the year, besides The Revenant. I think this movie takes the cake, man, for so far, because I love the way it's made, I love the storyline, I love the way it's edited, I love the acting, I love the effects, I love the whole unknown aspect, the detective work. I love it when it does that, man, so is it worth watching in theaters? Yes! Watch it, man. IMAX. Make sure you see it in IMAX. And if you're going to go in and be like, I'm going to see a 10-foot monster, <laughs> no, you're not. Let me tell you right now, sorry to disappoint you, you're not going to see Clovey, you know, you're not going to see that. I love this movie more than Cloverfield, the first one. I want to own this on Blu-ray, day one. I got to watch it again soon, man. 8.5 out of 10. Really good movie. Great. Oscar nomination for um, John Goodman. Get it out there, man. John Goodman, Oscar nomination. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later for uh, more of my reviews. Make sure to check out the spoiler review. Also, the brother Grimsby and uh, the young Messiah, Batman v Superman, my big fat Greek wedding too. All that stuff coming up, man, in a few weeks. Make sure to check it out. Uh, all my reviews. Hit the support button if uh, or hit the subscribe button if you want to support me. Really would appreciate it. Until next time, bye-bye.